Okay. Hi, everyone. This is Kirsten Hall with Fox Point Publishing. We are doing our July Fox Talk live on Facebook. And thank you for joining us. All right. I'm going to first introduce everyone. And they've picked out books for us to give away tonight. And of course, if you've ever been watching, um, you need to, in the chat box, uh, write a question. Um, ask a question. That's the only way we know you exist out there. So ask a question to any one of us. We'll do our best to answer or we'll make something up, either one. And <laughs> pretty much. And all right, off we go. And then you would have a chance to win a book. And actually of the books picked, we have An Unusual Tale by Helen Holder who happens to be on the screen this evening. And she's actually working on the sequel of this and should be out the end of this year, I think. <laughs> and another book chosen is a paperback of Jelly Beans. This is my first uh, children's book and it took me 50 years to be poetic. I would not exactly sit around and wait for another 50 years for me to come up with another poem. So that's your one chance there. Uh, the other one I have is a paperback of Shadow Speak and this is a dark fantasy new adult. I have two people on the screen reading it and we will get their thoughts and reviews on this as well. I think it's very well written. I call it a psychological thriller, as my mom puts it. Um, don't be tired, pay attention. And my mom loves it. She is in her 80s, she loves it. Um, it's got Norse mythology and Icelandic language and all that good fun stuff in it. All right, and the other one we have is Give a Little Snuggle. This is by Regina Noel Downing out of Decorah, Iowa. And it's um, a little story songbook with, let me see if I can find it without getting, oh, well, hold on here, sheet music. So if you play piano, ukulele, or sing, you can sing the song. And that's the first of her books, um, about a five book series. And she's got another one coming out in November called The Bedtime Rhyme. But okay, so off and running. Um, in my corner here, it's Liz, Liz Kachuk. She is our accountant, bean counter, honorary HR department, and a whole lot more. I don't know if we have names for all the hats she wears, but um, we told her that she can never, ever leave us. <laughs> See, now I'm making it official and telling everyone on Facebook and social media. And so now you're there you go. She's going to me down. <laughs> Everyone knows now. All right. Mm -hmm. On the other side of my screen, I've got Helen Holder. She is a uh, hashtag the Helen Holder collection, which has got an unusual tale. Um, I, I painted a magenta, flamingo. magenta flamingo. I was about to put want in there. I painted a magenta flamingo. Glorious Gertie's fire, fabulous fireworks. <clears throat> Sleepover with Grandma, which is a really a hard book to keep on the shelf. Everyone loves that. Terrific Tongues and David's Pretzels. Um, and we have Katie Bishop right below. And she is out <laughs> in Seattle, Washington. She's uh, working on, well, actually, I don't know, where are you in the process? Are you editing or are you just waiting for proofreads or what are we doing? We are waiting for the proofread. Okay. So proofread on Love and Murder, which is due out February of 2022. It is mm -hmm. a noir. It's a kitty noir, literary it fiction. It it's getting good reviews. And, and I'll go over the one Nadia sent us. It, that was a great review. The first loved one. Loved it. Absolutely out. loved it. And then Amy Gray. I don't think you should call it kitty. Kitty is a little different than the whole feel of these cats. A mature cat. It is a bit. It yeah. is a bit tongue in cheek. <laughs> yes, mature cat noir right there for you. And if, if we piqued your interest, man, put that on your to read list because it's impressive. And then Amy Gregg here, she is coming on with us with uh, Cozy Mysteries and we have Farmed and Dangerous. So she's wrapping up the editing on and that should be out what, December or January, something like that? Yeah, like December, Okay, uh, January at the latest. Okay, cool. I'm excited to read that one. I, I, I That's going on my list. I mean, Farmed and Dangerous, that sounds fabulous. <laughs> so, so, she, so she's got that one as yeah. well. And um, I, apologies, I have been on the road since about 6.15 this morning. So <laughs> over 12 hours, yeah, about 12 hours ago, I left my house. Brain cells are 
already sleeping. But anyway, <laughs> all right. So, um, okay, of the books. Okay, and I'm Kirsten Hall. Well, I already said that. So there you go. What am I working on? Um, I'm working on uh, trying to take over the world with Box Point Publishing and getting all, all of our awesome books out in the world. And uh, every day I put on about 250 miles onto my car and my car probably already hates me. And I'm going out and making friends with a bunch of librarians and booksellers. And if you're a librarian or a bookseller, you should contact me because we have awesome books. And then admin, if you guys can see that on the screen, that is Brad. He is our IT guy and someone who's moving into our shipping and distribution because if I'm on the road a lot, I can't do that anymore. So he's the one who makes sure that I have the books so I can bring them out to all the libraries and the booksellers. Anyway, all right. Um, so we're gonna first uh, first remind you guys, uh, ask us a question in the chat bar. That's the only way we know you exist. And we will either answer you honestly or make something up. And that gives you an opportunity to win one of the four books that were chosen. Okay, so the first one I'm gonna pick on, hmm. <laughs> what were we just talking about? Okay, Katie. I mean, you always pick on me first. <laughs> All right, so, um, all right, first of all, what is your take on Shadow Speak so far? Because you're halfway through it. And yes. then um, share with us then Love and Murder with Nadia's review. So, first is Shadow Speak. Yes, Shadow Speak is this just gorgeous, uh, very dark, very personal. I think you just really feel this main character and what she's going through, and she goes through a whole lot. <laughs> but the plot moves beautifully. The prose is just so lyrical and stunning. It's, it's very atmospheric and you kind of move through one scene to the next and you feel like you're kind of floating on a very dark cloud. And there's a lot going on, a lot of violent things going on. And so you're just really immersed in this world that Raven has created. And I've got to say, she gives me nightmares. It's happened. I, I made the mistake of reading it before bed one night and I will not do that again because it is, she's too good. You know, you, you know, when an author has got to you like that, that they've done a great job. Yeah, that's Makes true. you feel something, makes you sympathize with this character and what she's going through, makes you want to know what she's going to do next and, and how, how she's going to deal with this. It's about this young woman who basically gets ripped from her family, sold into slavery, essentially, and then has to figure her life out, which as you can imagine, is not very easy. So it's just, it's really a wonderful book with great characters and I'm really enjoying it. So highly recommend, which is why I chose it to give away today because I think it's just fabulous. Well, there you go. Ray, if you're watching, you're giving people nightmares. Good job. <laughs> <laughs> and actually, um, I just sent it to Amy. Amy is, oh, no, no. No, you're you're doing a review no. of Love and Murder. I'm, I'm very yeah, excited I'm about that. that one. Very excited. Yeah. Have you started reading it, Amy? Did you kind of snoop through it? I'm going to. <laughs> okay. okay. Yeah. We'll have to pick, pick on you in a future... <laughs> Fox Talk Live. Yes, okay, yes. so Katie, what did you think of Nadia's review? Remind us what it is, and then what did you think of it? Well, my book is a noir about cats, Kitty Noir, but that is very tongue in cheek. It's about two very <laughs> spoiled house cats, brother and sister, who get dragged into a very dangerous and violent criminal underworld by a cat gang named the Beaters <laughs> and a dirty rat of a ferret named Remy the Blonde. Uh, the title comes from the main characters who are named Love and Murder. The old woman who adopted them, who took them in, was reading a pulpy periodical that declared that cats only know two things, love and murder. So she thought she would be clever and name these kitties after their own natures. So that's where we are. Okay. Love and Murder. And we got our first review. I got my first review last week by Nadia. And... She wasn't sure that she liked it, but she was mesmerized by it. Shocked, stunned, I think. <laughs> yeah, transfixed and horrified. I believe car crash was used. Yeah, yeah. She's like, yes. I, I was transfixed and horrified. <laughs> like when I go past a car crash, I mean, you don't want to look, but you can't not look. And she goes, I'm not sure I liked it, but 
oh my gosh, you know. Well, it's very much, it's very much a noir. So it deals with that underworld, the unraveling, the downward spiral. It's also got a lot of Shakespearean elements to it. So lots of high drama. I love my characters. So it's a noir, lots of great lines, lots of glibness, lots of laughing at death. So <laughs> it's a lot of fun, but it's a dark story and it's a lot of drama. And I would also not recommend reading it before bed. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, uh, uh, the, Nadia, who we're talking about, is Nadia Giordana. She is a lovely lady out of Minneapolis and uh, a part of different book clubs. And she does um, television production and interviews and all that stuff. She's a wonderful person. And in earlier in her review, she goes, well, first I thought it was fun and playful and I could see it for like Pixar <laughs> or Disney or whatever. And then she's like, hour two, this is no longer a kid's book. <laughs> And this is definitely not a kid's movie. And the bottom just kind of drops out. It does. <laughs> so there you go. If you guys like noir or are curious or literary fiction or just, well, simply curious and you want to be transfixed and horrified at the same time, put mm. Katie's book on your to-do mm. list uh, next February. March, it's not boring. Sober. It's a it's a wild ride. It is, yeah. it, it's going to move and it's it's gonna go somewhere chelsea read it in about three days three and a half days uh last april and she's like i could not put it down wow and so there you go and that's why katie's on our screen and part of our company because i i'm just so happy to to be in in this fox point fox hole it's fabulous oh, thank you. it's, it's thank fantastic you. i just love it well and well, actually no, I, was, I just i was thinking about what uh, I was just thinking about just how your business is a family business, but when we come on as authors, you really feel like part of that family. And it really does feel like a foxhole and like every, you know, good sense of that phrase. And I'm just, I'm really happy to be here. And, and we're just, uh, we have, uh, I think I saw a couple of new reviewers come online on our uh, Google sheet today, which yeah, very, very exciting. So a couple of crime authors. So we'll have to see what they think. And uh, I feel very honored that they're going to, you know, kick the tires and, and see how I do. <laughs> yeah, no, I think you'll be very, a lot of people will be impressed. And actually, Amy over here, when we first started Fox Point and had how many people are on a bowling team, Amy? What, like six, six or seven. something? Yeah. yeah. So first, she, if, if anyone ever hears me say, you know, we'll have to get another bowling shirt or whatever, that's really Amy's idea. She was like, well, we're going to have to have, you know, uh, the Fox Point uh, no, no. bowling team. And then we yep. found out, though, that uh, a pack of foxes is not a pack. It's a skulk. S-K-U-L-K. Oh, I didn't know I love that. Yeah. Skulk. Skulk of foxes. Okay, that's, write that down for your great. third noir. And, yeah, and there so you Amy go. and I decided that maybe we shouldn't refer to us as skulk people. <laughs> I mean, that just sounds bad. So, but then um, we grew past six or seven and actually um, all of you still need bookmarks for me. Okay, I will get on this this week, like Friday. I'm not in a car at all on Friday. She has made some beautiful bookmarks <laughs> and um, for every one of us, and I just have to get them. See, they arrived to my, my house right before I left for camping in June. And so they're like over there on my desk. But I will get them in the mail to everyone. Okay, next up. Those are so cute. I'm so excited. I'm so excited to get one. Those are adorable. Well, everyone gets yeah. one. I just have to get off my bum and get them to the post office. Well, you're, you're not busy at all. You're not doing anything. Oh, no. Not busy. I'm just not Netflix in the way over here. <laughs> <laughs> All right. And then with Helen, um, she's got another unusual tale coming. Do you want to tell us all about that? Your your mic muted. Forgot I had to close out the um, cuckoo clock. Oh wow. I have a, I ended an unusual tale. Well, that's a story for another night. So I felt obligated to write another story. <laughs> So this is about the knight asking the princess to marry him. Yeah. Consulted my uh, eight-year-old granddaughter and her ideas of what's romantic, what are romantic proposals involved. 
Mm -hmm. So the knight tries them all. And they don't work out very well for him. Oh no. Fortunately, the dragon is there to stick his claws in it and get him going the right direction. Chelsea, yes. Chelsea says it's a cute book. I haven't seen the manuscript yet. I haven't seen anything of it yet. But um, yeah. She well, says Mia, Mia's book. ideas involve a lot of chocolate covered strawberries oh. and chocolate <laughs> fountains and. Oh, um, yeah. That would have worked on me. I didn't work in the moonfish, but I don't even know what moonfish are, and I don't know why they're romantic. So <laughs> moonfish. Yeah. Chocolate yeah, fountain would have no worked idea. on me. I mean, <laughs> that, that would have been is, more than enough. In there. She has a very, very specific idea about the uh, engagement ring, what it should look like, and okay. Well, you know, <laughs> hey, if, if the the request comes with chocolate fountain, I'd be like, ah, okay, maybe this is yeah. a possibility. <laughs> Well, think about it, Dan. <laughs> sure. Who needs jewelry? There's a chocolate fountain. I mean, come on. <laughs> this, is, this is totally different from <clears throat> my proposal, which came with a can of Drano wrapped in a, a towel. Oh, 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 wow. Okay. That oh, man. Yeah, it's like really different. Yeah. Things have definitely changed <laughs> over the years. Right. We got to get more into that. Yeah. We, this is a story that needs to be told. <laughs> We've got to hear this. <laughs> And, and well, he borrowed the Drano from me because he had problems with his drain. So we returned it, the ring in, in, <laughs> in with the Drano. It's actually nice. really cute. <laughs> Hold on. It's, it's good that uh, you didn't go, oh, it's empty and threw it. Or I, you, right. you see Bill running, no, wait. <laughs> That's pretty funny. All right, I am I'm gonna look and see if we have any questions that we don't have any questions. Okay, if you guys are watching, please put a question in the chat box. We have Helen is an author, I'm an author and marketing and co-publisher, and I'm the comedic relief. I'm the peanut gallery. I yeah, okay. Um Katie is an author, Amy is an author, Liz is our bean counter. Um I still think she has a book in her, but she says that she doesn't write. <laughs> you, you write, don't you? You just, it, yeah. you're, you're like an in-closet writer? Uh, yeah, yeah, closet yeah. writer. Okay. She you makes write sure the inmates don't run the asylum. <laughs> <laughs> Keep everybody in check. It's so much better yeah. at that. <laughs> and, and she is very good at that. Um, all right, so Liz, do you wanna update us on everything that's going on in your world? Oh, in my world. Well, I am, I am reading Shadow Speak. I'm probably a quarter of the way into it. Every time I, I took it um, out on the lake last weekend and there's too many people around me. I'm like, stop talking. Um, it is hard. It, you get lost in it. That's fast. why you got burned. You do, yeah, that's probably you why. Were, you were engrossed. But, yeah, you just, I was engrossed in the book. You didn't notice. It is good. You do have to pay attention. It's not one of those books you can just sit down and be like, you know, it doesn't trying to think like it flows well, but it's not one of those books where you can just let your mind do it all. Cause you have to think about what you're reading too. I just, I, I'm loving it. I can't wait. I, I need to schedule time to sit down and be like, lock the doors. Nobody talk to me, turn off my phone, <laughs> but I'll be down there until it's done. So that's why I don't do that. <laughs> Put those but yeah. soundproof earphones on, you know. Oh, that's a great idea. Blinders. <laughs> <laughs> those are essential to life for me the noise canceling headphones i don't get anything done about one. those are amazing mm -hmm. <laughs> oh, that, Kevin scared the crap out of me to be locked in the room and i was like oh my god <laughs> you even hear him open the door <laughs> no and no <laughs> and um let's see and business is keeping you all busy and busy Oh yeah, yeah, we're really busy. Um, we are planning on moving into a space August 1st. Okay. I actually got the finalized lease today. So I have to return it, they'll do all their nonsense. And yeah, we'll be in our own little, it's not It's not quite closet size, it's a little bit bigger, <laughs> but it'll help me focus and not be at home and hog the living room up anymore with my work stuff. Yeah. So I'm sure the family is excited to get that back. Yeah. You gotta get a reading corner in there. Nice big chair, yeah, you know, we, nice we, and cozy. So 
So Mary's going to bring in her like flat screen TV <laughs> and we're going to use that to do zooms and put it okay. on the wall. And then I thought, well, why not have a couch? Yeah. You know, like a love seat, you know, and then we can move it and, you know, watch Netflix while we do bookie. I don't know. It's going to be, where's so, mommy gone? Right? <laughs> How come mom never comes home from the office? <laughs> you know, it's way better. So, so, so yeah. The office is in what, St. Paul or something? Yeah, a little Canada. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. Like on the, the north side, I think, yeah. of little Canada. It's That's right by the big uh, snowman. 35E and 694. Yeah. Okay. No, not that's north. That's north St. Paul. Okay. But yeah, so like we're right on 35E, just past 36 before, you know, 694. So okay. okay. Northern St. Paulish. But okay. yeah, it's, we're we're all we're excited. <laughs> we're very excited. Cool. And it's you and yeah. Mary and anyone else? Not officially yet. I've actually talked to a couple other options. Mm -hmm. So both part-time, probably somebody to do taxes would be great. Mm -hmm. Um it was a uh, Mary threw out the idea. I was on board. We haven't talked to that person yet. So yeah. we're hoping to get that situated by the end of the year just in time for tax season. So okay, there you so, go. And, and yeah. so what's, what's your website to tell everyone to give you more business possibly, to keep you really busy? Ah, www, yeah, right, keep you super busy. Yeah. www.fullcircleacctg.com. All right, so fullcircleacctg.com. Yep. And you can actually find Liz on, under, listed under professionals on our website, which is Fox Point Publishing. Don't forget the E after point because, well, we're fancy. Foxpointpublishing.com. <laughs> really really Look are. on professionals. Oh, heck yeah, we are fancy. Mm -hmm. And um, you'll find Liz and you'll find all of us actually on here. And all right, um, let's see. Do we have, we don't have any questions yet. Do you all not want a free book? I mean, come really? on, it's free. Anyway, mm -hmm. yeah, let's see. Shadow Speak is... 1695 look how big that book is that is like a 400 plus page book and um yeah you you could get a free book but you have to ask a question because we don't know if you're watching well we don't even know who you are actually so definitely ask a question <laughs> um all right so amy tell us how it's going on farmed and dangerous and is that part of a sequel or what do you got going on or a series uh -huh. or it is part of a series uh farmed and dangerous just got done with first round editing so I'm doing some revisions on that um and then I will send that back to my editor Sarah um and then I think after that we'll send it to maybe another like beta reader just to make sure everything flows mm -hmm. um and yeah it's the first book in a cozy mystery series called the accidental farmer okay um, or, or mystery series um it's <laughs> Yeah, Farmed and Dangerous. And then on top of editing and revising, I'm also starting uh, book two, which is Fowl Play, F-O-W-L, like the bird fowl. Um, okay, very good. So cute. Very good. Lots, lots, of, lots of farm puns. Uh -huh. um, so working on that. And then when I'm supposed to be working on the second book, I'm also playing around with some ideas for the third book, which is way too far ahead. And I'm trying to make that be quiet. But mm -hmm. The characters are, are talking and I'm like trying to focus. So <laughs> and yeah, it's it's hard to turn off the the faucet once it gets going. And especially when you have ideas, you're like, no, 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 I gotta do this first. Um, I think that's what a lot of people don't understand is that is that writers, we're all crazy. Like we all hear voices. <laughs> we're just we're exactly. we're all like one one step away from just not functioning I mean, <laughs> and, and a lot of people think like they're like well you you can write you you write the story you know what these the, the story is going to happen you know what the characters are going to do you plotted this out you outlined it and i'm like no, no you can you can have an idea of where a scene is going and then all of a sudden it takes it goes off uber left direction like there was another yeah. story that i was working on forever ago and just happy go lucky blah 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 and all of a sudden that killed my main character's boyfriend i'm like oh, well that well that happened so 
<laughs> that uh, my favorite that sorry. things. <laughs> my favorite one, uh, my favorite one that I, I see around is, well, well, why you you just make it up as you go along? It's like, well, yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. I'm uh, the, those, the, the, the plotters and the pantsers. I'm a planter. Yeah, like, I yeah, exactly. kind of plot it, but it's just more of guidelines or not really rules. <laughs> well you know i know it sorry i just don't know a lot of the the advice for for writers and novelists is to plan a whole outline and my brain just it doesn't work that way i try i have a general direction yes yeah and and that's just more of an an intuitive (laughs) writer i think some some people are more Mm -hmm. uh, methodical that way and that's just how they think best and Mm -hmm. and some people are, are more intuitive i just kind of feel my way through and sometimes you get wander a little too much here mm-hmm. you got to cut it back but <laughs> but sometimes I think if you try to control the creative process too much you don't have a lot of serendipity in it you can miss really good moments that come mm-hmm. out of just kind of spontaneous this or that's and so you know sometimes that's just kind of part of the process I think. Yeah. a lot of people explain it as um an author just kind of sits there and uh notates every, you know you watch a movie <clears throat> And you just write mm-hmm. everything down as it happens. Um, all right, going on what Amy said about Fowl and uh, F-O-W-L and um, her next book. Mm-hmm. Katie, do you want us to tell us about your avian mm. adventure with your next book? Mm. <laughs> my, my next book is going to be about crows. Mm. I'm doing a, a whole crow drama saga, noir. It's <laughs> about a... Uh, a group of a little murder of crows that are in hiding because they lost a rebellion. And so they're in (laughs) hiding and it's been long enough that there are, there are younger crows. Now there, there are babies that have grown up and they, uh, they make some pretty big mistakes. And so it sets off this whole thing all over again. And it's going to be really about the subtext of war and (laughs) how it, affects multiple generations and what that means for a society. And there's a lot of research coming out of the University of Washington. And, and if anyone has seen, heard me babble on about this before, I'm going to babble <laughs> on about it again. But there's this fabulous, great researcher uh, named um, John uh, Marsluff. And he really has this thesis about how crow society and human societies have evolved over like the last 50,000 years from the hunter gatherers. I mean, crows were in North America, before we were and then they came over with us but how our societies have kind of co-evolved and so there's a lot of human subtext that can be brought over to a drama that can be explored through animal characters which is what I like doing so that's what we're going with yeah you're you're very good at that too um yeah and actually anything that comes you know through Facebook that has any crows I don't know Katie if you've noticed this but I start tagging you on I love it I love it (laughs) It I love it and then with yes. Helen, I tag her on anything flamingos. Are you going to do that flamingo on the side of your house with the meter? Did you yes, guys see that? Probably not. I don't think I'm that good at <laughs> hire some artist to do that. Well, either, <laughs> you know, Samantha, she's in town. That's Get right. Samantha, Samantha Hinton, who did, I painted a magenta flamingo. Get her to come over. Did you guys see that on Facebook when I posted that? It, yeah. the the, wa- the water meter on the side of the house the electrical water oh meter. yes yes that was Someone so cute <laughs> turned it into a flamingo and I'm like oh, that's, that's perfect good. well yeah. my husband teases me because when you do that he's like your publisher wants another book out of you you better get working <laughs> <laughs> if, she, if she sees that you're dinking around and uh, flamingos on the side of your house <laughs> No, no, no. And really, I have another uh, idea that I'm researching for same idea as the flamingo, only this is clay and another animal with the sister Noel. You you know, when flamingo came out, other people were saying that you should have that same kind of thing for different animals. You know, so I've got got that started, and 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 tell us another one of those started and. I and have tell another us, one about dust bunnies. <laughs> dust tell bunnies. Us, tell us about um you've got okay, so you have another unusual tale coming out, and then you have um what goes up like, must come down. Yep. 
and when is that coming out or when is that being illustrated or what? I don't, well, I don't know. know. It must be it must be at the illustrator now because Raven's okay. done. Okay. And Raven and we just finished the another unusual tale and then the editor is working on um, a gnome's garden. Okay. <laughs> yep. Yep. So, so yeah, the other ones I just have I tend, you know, talking about making it plan and an arc and everything. Mm -hmm. I tend to just to, well, that's a cute line. Now, how can I work that in? <laughs> Someone was watching. Okay. Nice. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah, I, I come up with great titles and I'm like, oh, that would be great. And then I add that to my list of things to do that apparently doesn't get done. Um, and I was going to say, even if any of you did paint flamingos on the side of your house, I was supposed to have the third in my corner confession series done in like 19 and then 20 and then 21 and we're shooting for 22. <laughs> so have you given, have you given, uh, I, I gave, Chel, uh, I said to Chelsea, well, I will have this book here by the June 15th, see? And then it's like, oh, okay, they sent me a contract right away. Now I really have to do it. See, that <laughs> Chelsea's just going to have to send you a contract. Well, need a fire. Yeah. Need a fire. Well, you know, even then, though, it, um, yeah, I get busy. I'm just pointing <laughs> that out. You know, this, this woman is, every time I pull up my feed, she's somewhere. I, I, I mean, know. you work so hard. You're just, you're getting all these books out into the world and we just couldn't be more appreciative and well, more excited about it seriously thank you i'm just darned and determined that this is gonna work mm. Mm. I, I don't know if <laughs> Alyssa's like, like mm -hmm, it's going to work <laughs> um, what i tell you it's working <laughs> your oh too. good 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 i and i don't know how many of it you have told this to but you, you remember pinky and the brain and you remember the brain the mm -hmm. little bulbous mouse and okay so that's how i see myself because every morning i get up and i think of how i'm going to take over the world the same by the end do. of the night i'm exactly. like okay it didn't work today maybe tomorrow <laughs> Well, I think what's really what's really great about this press is there are so many unique titles coming out. Mm -hmm. There's, you know, there, there's what four big corporate presses now, and 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 there's a there's a lot of of this and that. But we're really doing unique books here. Mm -hmm. I mean, there's nothing like Shadow Speak. No. They're, you know, Farmed and Dangerous. I'm really excited to read that. I mean, the the Alchemist map. I, there's not really anything like that that I've seen. No. And you know, and then and then there's love and murder. I yeah. mean, it's it's a bonkers cat book. <laughs> well, it is. It's a wide variety. I mean, there's like yeah. a yeah. really wide variety of different yeah. books. Yeah. yeah, and and so if people are are watching out there, it's like where kind of the innovation is at in this industry are indie presses, like what mm -hmm. we're trying oh, yeah. to do here. And we're coming together and we're a bunch of artists just trying to make our mark and and if you want like the new, exciting, cutting edge stuff, this is where it's at. Yep. And I will also point out Helen over there, although you retired in what, 2000, 2001? 2003. I was close. <laughs> she <laughs> retired in 2003, but 33 years as a first grade teacher. And um, I've, I've been focusing a lot on libraries, mainly because I'm in rural Minnesota and that's really all we have out here are libraries. We don't have a lot of booksellers. So I'm going into all the libraries and I'm fanning out from there. But every one of them have been very impressed with Helen's books because it all has an educational component. I mean, terrific tons. I can't help we, myself. Huh? I can't help myself. No, I know you can't help yourself. I mean, David's Pretzels is how to read a dictionary and glossary of different words, Xanthic, X-A-N-T-H-I-C. You never oh. see Xanthic in a children's book. Well, Helen's children's book. You don't book see that in a, in a novel. <laughs> <laughs> so there you go. You'll have to include Xanthic in, in your books. And, um, and I will say, I had no idea what an Anna Macassar is. And, you know, I have run into in the last, what, week and a half, like four librarians are like, a what? I'm like, yeah, it's that doily thing you had on your grandfather. They're like, really? I thought it was just, I mean, so we're school and librarians out here. And I mean, wow. yeah. So David's pretzels and and uh, the the glossary on the different fireworks and um, P 
people a story song book i love that yeah, too a i mean story song book. yeah I and i wanted to add as a, a, a flute player i was i was a flute player when i when i was a kid and a, a teenager all the way through college actually uh <laughs> but if it's in a piano key of c ukulele you can probably play it on flute too so for all those all those little uh, flute players out there for your band <laughs> practice there you go there you go. Um, all right. And so, Liz, do you have anything going on with fowl or birds or avians or any other animals you know? <laughs> nope. Nope. No? Just no? Reggie. Hey, she no, Reggie. If, if she, I've been dealing with the IRS. I have a new appreciation for people who make this their life's work. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. To do this. Those are three letters you don't want to hear in a sentence that has dealing with. Yeah, well, my my sister who recently died did not pay her income taxes for three years. Uh -huh. So trying to get in contact with them and get somebody to tell me, okay, there's not enough money to pay everything. How much does she owe? How much? You know, how, what are the penalties? There's not enough money. How do I divide it up between you and the state? Yeah. Wow. They have yeah. the longest hold times of anybody I've ever. <laughs> if you can get a hold of anybody, I think the IRS right. like completely went offline or something like oh, that. Oh yeah. Wow. Uh, 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 sometimes they send you to dead ends. Uh -huh. Sometimes they say, "Oh, we don't have enough people. We're too busy." Click. Oh. <laughs> That'd be like, well, you know, I can sit on it for as long as you want because it's not on my list of important things to do. <laughs> It's not well, I, I have now help. I have now sent them many letters just saying, I sent you checks for what money there was. There is no more. Too bad. Yeah. <laughs> Too bad and so sad. Oh well. Um, all right. So for anyone watching, if you have any questions for us, um, you should ask them, and then you'd have a really good darn chance of winning a book. And we have, um, oops, well, hold on. We have Shadow Speak. Uh, this is a dark psychological thriller that gives Katie nightmares. It does. <laughs> very much so. Very much so. <laughs> and we have uh, Give a Little Snuggle. It's a story songbook by Regina Noel Downing, um, who is a professional musician and educator herself. And then we have Jelly Beans. This is my uh, first being poetic in the first half century of my life. And so apparently this only happens poetically to me every 50 years so really now is the time because I don't know <laughs> okay there's no guarantee that I'm going to be poetic in another now 48 years from now so we'll who knows and uh <laughs> then we have an unusual tale that has a sequel coming out another unusual tale the end of 2021 and if you don't ask us any questions one you're not going to win a book but two you're just going to have to listen to us ramble on and <laughs> you know uh we're pretty good at rambling oh my gosh yes. i have a question <gasps> all right Yay! susan schaefer oh <gasps> susan schaefer okay susan first of all is the bookstore owner of the bookshop down in boone iowa that i went to on july 1st and um uh, bless her heart she <laughs> i'm turning southern bless her heart um uh, <laughs> she uh ordered a lot of um, books from Fox Point. So um, if anyone is in the Boone, Iowa, Ames, Iowa, um, I just lost it. Put it this way, if you're out on that road or anywhere near Boone, go see Susan because she's got our books and they're fabulous Yay. books. But okay, so um, she wants to know when the Kitty Noir comes out. And oh, oh. she's got two cats in her store and they're oh, big let, let's, uh, let's get cats. Let's get the little... Get there that you go. There. This there is you the, go. the preview cover. Yes. Very Can you nice, see it? Very nice. <laughs> yep. So Ooh, I also have Remy the Blonde. Yep. Ooh, this is our ferret is nice. femme fatale. Yeah. What nice that is. <laughs> Dirty rat of a ferret that he is. Yes. Sir. Mm -hmm. Uh February 22nd, yes? Yes. 22222. I love that. Yeah. 222 <laughs> 2022. It's yes. coming out. Yes. Yeah. And uh, I think it will do really, really rather well. Um, and we're going to start the pre-sale on it actually uh, right after Thanksgiving, probably not Thanksgiving. Mm -hmm. and I know that's out there, but we're going to include Katie's book in um, all the holiday sales, holiday pre-orders, that kind of thing. Plus, we will have her included in any uh, advertising that we do 
for holiday gift buying and that kind of yep. thing. So some nice winter dark and broody noir reading. <laughs> exactly. So yeah, March is typically the snowiest month I know, at least in Minnesota. So if you're um, snowed in and want to read some gritty back alley cat stuff uh, <laughs> where the bottom drops out and then all you're ever going to hear is Nadia in your head going, I don't think this is a kid's book. <laughs> not a kid's book and, and Nadia just know thank you so much for uh, she matter of fact I will point out she got the the arc on what June 30th July mm -hmm. 1st and yep, got yep, yep. the review back to us like on July 5th 6th yeah. so over a holiday weekend you know she didn't put that book down how many put 114,000 words mm, it's long yeah yep. it's long and it's she meaty got, yeah and so again, she was transfixed and horrified at the same time. And uh, that just tells you how good the book is. Nice. <laughs> no, I, I love the review. She wasn't sure on the review, but I think it's, that's a fabulous review. So no, I loved you. it. It's, yeah. it's fantastic. So thank you very much. I really yeah. appreciate you taking the time and writing out the review it really means the world. So yep. thank you very much, Nadia. Thank you. Yes, very much so. Mm -hmm. And um, all right. So Helen's got, uh, you've got the gnome, you've got what comes up or what comes up. That's awful. What goes up, up must come must down. Come down. <laughs> yeah. What comes Come's up in. must, yeah. Anyway, and then who says um, this woman's retired? I don't believe it. Oh just, no, no, she's got this. she's got groupies, and she's got her books set out on her piano bench. That even when the UPS or the mailman comes by, he's like, "Hey, you got a new book?" And she's like, "Yeah," and he, you know, throws a twenty at her or whatever. I mean, she she went to her class reunion. Right. How many books did you sell down there? Uh, I think uh, I think about thirteen. Okay. Nice. What's this about throwing a 20? That sounds very noirish to me. It really does. <laughs> we'll have to talk. It's, it's, it's all that all that experience I've had in valleys. No, that sounds bad. Never mind. Okay. <laughs> no, 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 no. No. Whole new, whole new facet of Kirsten. None of you guys. No. It was like, what? So so we have to, you know, we have to realize that. My book's about cats, but it's not a cozy. No. They're cute, but they are, are, are not fluffy and cute. They, it's a noir. Amy mm -hmm. writes the cozies. Yes. yes. Yep. She, yep. she writes foul play, farmed and dangerous. So my cats are cute, but they are not cute. So, That's true. <laughs> That's true. so be warned. <laughs> and um, with Helen having groupies and such, she is, Helen's actually going to Mankato for the Deep Valley Book Festival, which is October mm -hmm. 2nd. And yes. I think she's going to do extremely well there. And she is also one of the featured authors doing a book signing at the Twin Cities Book Festival, which is October 16th on the Minnesota State Fairgrounds in the Progress Building in St. Paul. And I nice. think she will do very good there as well. So yes, uh, Helen is hashtag the Helen Holder collection and we're adding to it and she, you see she's laughing but you know I have bookstores all over the place telling me tell me about the Helen Holder collection I'm like well here we go and so there you <laughs> sit yeah. down for a yeah <laughs> just on a side note it's it's really wonderful to hear all these events starting to come back like yes. it, you know it's just been so yeah. rough and it's just mm -hmm. It's so exciting. It's it's heartwarming. <laughs> yeah, it is, to say the least. And um, yeah. well, I was talking with a library in northeastern Iowa this morning, and uh, he's like, yeah, I bet this was really hard with all the libraries that were shut last year. I'm like, mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. And, and, and he said, and I bet people weren't going and shopping at the bookstores. I'm like, yeah, they yeah. weren't. <laughs> <laughs> That's why Amazon made all the money. Yeah, exactly. it was very, very difficult. Mm -hmm. And um, let's see. Oh, hey, you know, I don't know if you guys saw this, but uh, June 18th of next year, uh, Fox Point is going to um, Deadwood, Deadwood, South Dakota. Yes. Yeah. And so if you guys want to do some stopping out and doing a, a mm -hmm. vacation and uh, signing, I've we were uh, we were actually thinking about doing that, like heading heading over that way and just you know stopping along the way, doing the Kirsten, doing the Kirsten thing. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, exactly. doing the Kirsten. yeah. Yeah, I've got sixteen feet of table um, at that show at that yes. event. So, 
Yes. And then who's doing Hackensack? Helen's doing Hackensack. She's going up there in August. I asked her, you know, so how far do you want to travel? You know, being that we live in Southern Minnesota, she goes, oh, I don't care. I, I have a show for Bill, Bill Drives. I'm like, okay. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Helen's going everywhere. Um, no. No. <laughs> And then, you don't you um, don't tease you, we don't tease you we know if we if we suggest it if we say okay we'll do it you're going to get us lined up i mean it's just going to happen so we can't joke about these things <laughs> oh no no uh, every everyone's invited uh yeah, yeah. Dead, deadwood in june and then october 1st i'm i've already got us on october 1st 2022 again in mankato nice I always know that the mankato and the twin cities book festival and when Love and Murder comes out, Katie, you have got to come out here for the Twin Cities mm. Book Festival. That yes, is seriously yes, the granddaddy absolutely. book festival. Absolutely. I just, I, I'm so happy because, you know, I, I'm with uh, all you uh, Minnesotans and my grandparents are both from Duluth. So I, I visited a few times as a kid and I always loved it. So it's just, it just feels really wonderful for me to be, be a part of your gang. Well, <laughs> part, of, part of our skulk. Yes. Skulk. skulk you know skulk. that that that's getting used you know that right yeah yeah, yeah <laughs> def, definitely um and and you'll have to put a uh a thank you to amy Gregg for the word skull she's the one that yes. came up with that yes yeah. there'll be a note there'll, there'll be there'll be a note An acknowledgement yes, yes. Yeah. yeah there you but go I, i'm going to be looking forward to uh reviewing farmed and dangerous so right. get that onto my ipad woman let's go <laughs> i guess when it's getting ready to go out again mm -hmm. after those revisions i will make sure that you get a copy yes i would, so, I would yes, think yes. the arc would be out probably around labor day nice yep. you would think if it's coming out december ish yes <laughs> <laughs> let me get a hold of the editing department first hold please <laughs> yeah. more, let, let me get a hold of the author to actually get stuff done um, yeah. Tell anyway. the second and third book they're just <laughs> going to have to wait. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. Yeah. A lot, right now it's more the outside sources like the evil day job and family. Mm -hmm. and, yeah. and, a, and a little monkey I met uh, yeah. finally officially Amy's daughter on this past Saturday when I was mm -hmm. up in Victoria, Minnesota. Uh, Amy came over to harass her publisher and I it did. was lovely to see her again. <laughs> I have only seen you I think once before yeah yep. like June of 19 um Amy's daughter yep. is the first official child who ever got the jelly beans book yep ever she's the on the website. wide world and that's actually how Amy and I met um is yep. that she she found me on Fox Point and ordered jelly beans and and there you go here she is Kirsten I don't want to put you on the spot but I'm going to Oh. I, I want to hear some of this verse. <laughs> the the some of the what? The, the verse. You the verse. He it's you, oh, you said you're poetic, but, but I, I loved it. Yeah. Read jelly okay. beans. Yeah. Can you read us a little bit? I I, I want to hear it. I got here. Okay, I can do that <laughs> for you. My gosh, I haven't done this since like before COVID when the world well, you know, closed loaded. up. So We're amongst oh. friends here. We're amongst friends. We yeah. are, and mm -hmm. I will tell you this: how this worked is I was goofing around and binging netflix house of cards okay which has nothing to do with feel good jelly beans i couldn't even, i wasn't even eating jelly beans i wasn't even thinking about jelly beans and the first thing that popped in my head and again i have no idea people are like jelly beans wouldn't you agree and so i'm watching you know kevin spacey and uh uh oh what's robin robin wright thank you robin wright and yeah and being mean evil people and i'm like oh that's a cute <laughs> line and then i kept watching you know goofing around <laughs> and then it popped in my head so many different kinds let us look and see and then i thought huh that rhymes i'm not good at rhyming things so well, now I, we know where uh taking over the world has come from it's a combination yeah. of house of cards and jelly yes and and, yep. and in reality if you want perfection it's got to be black licorice jelly beans i am all about black look and i know all of you are going to be like ew well no that's more for me like that's it. the way yeah, I see my, it. my dad <laughs> always the black licorice and he was just like more for me yeah you yep. can just stay away and <laughs> i was with with four kids the first three were like ew and i'm like yay for what more for me and then brad's like i like the jelly beans let's share them i'm like oh no, no they're all 
go away. <laughs> so, um, but um, all right. So I uh, paused uh, House of Cards and I took a piece of paper out of my printer and I wrote, you know, the, the two lines down. And I thought, oh, that's cute. And I put it back and I hit play again. And then the faucet turned on. And this is what I wrote. Um, okay. Cinnamon is sassy. And chocolate, excuse me, and chocolate pudding is lumpy. Oh. And you know why he's lumpy? Because I have my entire life I'm up until the age of, well, 50 when I wrote this, that um, I never was patient enough to make chocolate pudding. You, you know, you're supposed to mix and mix and mix and mix and mix and mix. And I don't have time or the patience. So I've been known to have <laughs> pockets of chocolate pudding powder in my chocolate pudding and that's okay because it's still chocolate pudding with like little bursts of surprise but you know it's, it's anyhow. that's a warning yeah so that's why my chocolate pudding is lumpy all right french french vanilla is artistic while sour cherry is grumpy and it's only because he the ball didn't get in the hole Oh, no. I want his sweater though. I want Sour Cherry's sweater. Mm -hmm. I, I I love that sweater. The, 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 what is it? Argyle. Argyle, oh, yeah. yes. yes. That's so cute. I haven't heard I that, that since like the 1980s. <laughs> all right. Our, all of our Argyle socks. Okay. Tutti Fruity is fun and groovy. And by the way, I identify as Tutti Fruity. That's me right there. <laughs> <laughs> the crazy hair. Note the crazy hair. Yeah. Okay. All right. So, and, and I would love to get those boots. Okay. Uh, grapefruit is refreshing and tart. And toasty marshmallow is lighthearted and mellow. Mango chili is a wanderer at heart. Oh, there you go. And um, so, yeah, I mean, the, the creative flow just started. And I'm like, well, you know, and it only take, took me about 45 minutes to write this book. And then I went back to House of Cards and all the people. <laughs> Um, <laughs> tangerine, orange, lemon, and lime, all kissed by the sun and having a great time. And, and really, that's me. <laughs> we know that's a lie. <laughs> Coconut is flaky and a little outer space. And I love that sky back there. That is so cute. That, that is a great sky. Kiwi yeah. is... Oh, Kiwi is hippie cool. I'm reading this backwards. I'm like, and, and I haven't read this out loud in a long time, so I don't totally remember it. Oops. Oh, uh, pomegranate is curious and mysterious mm. while pineapple plays the fool. All right, so it goes through 35 jelly beans and then introduces all of them and such. Um, and then, all right, okay. And then on page 28, it starts with, have a look around. No need to be shy. Who are you and who am I? It promotes acceptance, kindness, and anti-bullying. Choose your favorite jelly bean. Which one is the real you? Are you snappy and loud or mysterious and cool? Oh. And I love reading this to kindergartners and story times and that kind of stuff. Oh, they absolutely love it. And it's wonderful to see too. Um, all of us are different. Our personalities vary. So do our shapes, sizes, and colors. Just look at these singing berries. Oh, yeah. So yeah, pointing out to kids that although we come in different shapes, sizes, colors, and personalities, we are essentially all the same in the big candy dish of life, much just like jelly bean. Orange and blue, pink and green. There are more colors than you have ever seen. I like the bathing suit. Mm -hmm. I like that. <laughs> the legless Amy, which, uh, which jelly bean is your jelly bean? Mine? Mm-hmm. Your, your, your daughter, which one? Which oh jelly God. bean is she? Yeah, uh, what? Cassie is uh, snap. She's loud. She's the cheerleader one. She's, she's like, snappy and loud oh. cheerleader. She's like, yeah, she's like, I'm loud. I'm like, yes, <laughs> you are. <laughs> and actually on the Jelly Bean webpage um, is a picture of her daughter holding the book in front of her My Little Pony. And the mm -hmm. very first night she had to read the book three different times. Yeah. Three oh. times in a row for bedtime. And, 
that does my heart <laughs> good. And actually, last Saturday, Cassie bought another book uh, of jelly beans. Thank you, by the way. Yep. And um, instead of Cassie this time around, which was signed to her when she was three, she's now five and a half. Yep. And has signed it to Cassandra. <laughs> Because that's go. her full name. Full name. She's and so she's, grown up now. Yeah, and you know, she spelled I, it out for me. I'm a little envious because my <laughs> mom, I'm actually named after my great grandmother, Catherine, mm -hmm. but my mom decided to just name me Katie. Hmm. And because she didn't want me to be Kathy or something. I, I don't know, but I'm I'm jealous of my name <laughs> is a nickname. I'm always kind of jealous. My husband is, is Jonathan or John. I'm like, you get to choose. I'm uh -huh. always a nickname. So so I, you know. I, being being Cassandra, you know, <laughs> I respect that. Mm -hmm. And and at all five and a half old years old, and she's probably what just shy of a total of four feet, maybe a little four feet. Mm -hmm. She's like, well, my full name is Cassandra, C A S S A N D R A, and you can Woo! sign my book to Cassandra. And I'm like, alrighty then. <laughs> Better watch out for that one. Woo! <laughs> she, she has it all going on. <laughs> You gotta take over. <laughs> Pretty much. So, so yeah, basically, um, jelly beans. It's a fun book, and you, and if you have a question now, Susan has had a question, and I will get a hold of Susan and find out what book she wants. You guys, it is six fifty-two, which means you have approximately seven and a half minutes to come up with a question. I mean, we could keep talking. You know, Liz, do you have any? Do we have questions for the audience? We've never tried that before. I don't know if they're going to give us free books, but I mean, we could have a question. Liz, what would you ask the audience? If we were oh, sitting here. The audience? Yeah. What? Oh, see, I'm going to make it complicated. Um, <laughs> what is the square root of 856 is, times 30%? Did you claim on your taxes last year? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> What inspires you to read a book? Okay, that's a good one. Or buy a book to read. That's probably better. That's a good one. Because my question was, why aren't you asking us questions? <laughs> <laughs> okay, so that's much more intellectual that I came up with. Helen, what would you ask the audience? Oh, no, I just have been busy telling them everything. <laughs> Uh, I guess I would like to know uh, if, if, why aren't you going to your local indie book, indie, the closest indie bookstore to you because so much more fun than Amazon. Yeah, mm -hmm. that's true. And definitely shop local and support your local stores because if you don't, they're not going to be there. And I tell you, Amazon, um, well, I'll tell you this right now, as an Amazon bookseller, <laughs> here we go, the dirty under. <laughs> okay, along with the percentage of the sale of the book uh, that Amazon takes out for fees, they take $5 per book out of each sale. So if you pay $14.95 for a book to Amazon or well, through Amazon to Fox Point, First of all, they're going to take a percentage off that top, which I don't even know what Liz might know, but I don't, but I know it's a percentage. So they take off a percentage and might drop it down to like $13. And then they take another $5 off the top. And so really the bookseller is only getting $8. A lot of fees. And that's what makes uh, it affordable for people who started Amazon to go to the moon and everything else that this person does um, and buys. And, um, and it doesn't go, you know, that money does not go back to the little, the little league group that needs t-shirts or the local economy, mm -hmm. the well, local food shelf, every, it doesn't. Every time I go to our local bookstore, not only are the, and I'm pretty sure most of the owners of independent bookstores are, pretty similar to our fabulous one mm -hmm. and every time you go there so not only do you have a good time with the the owners and the people that work there but you always meet somebody mm -hmm. I've never gone into sweet reads here in Austin without meeting somebody I didn't know before mm -hmm. or some well sometimes they're from out of town and sometimes they're from in town but 
you yeah. always have some kind of an interesting conversation with somebody. Yeah. So yeah. you get books and conversation and yeah. friendship. It's wonderful. Yeah, it is. I think um, what uh, maybe what people also don't realize about Amazon is that any bookseller, big or small, is always going to be subjected to their algorithm. Mm -hmm. And so you're kind of at the mercy of it and they change it whenever they want and they want you to buy advertising and advertising can be so expensive that it pretty much hammers you down yep. to what you do make depending you know, and, and so I, I've heard of authors who are doing well one month and they've been doing fine for a while. And then all of a sudden it's just gone. Yeah. And, and if so you, if, yeah. if you don't buy the advertising, they're not going to put you out there. That's for sure. Yeah. And they're still taking a percentage in a $5 flat yeah. fee off your sales. Yeah. So, so if you can buy, you if you can buy off your, you know, indie bookstores, buy off foxpoint.com you know yeah. that the, the money's actually going to the people who are producing not just the people who run a big massive website and i will also point out that although we're um discussing amazon this is public domain information um i'm not giving any trade secrets away or anything so in case there's anyone going oh my gosh you know amazon's gonna be so mad or whatever i know no. And, well, then the, they're mad at the entire internet because yeah, yeah, you see it yeah. everywhere. It, it's public domain yeah. information. It's all over the place, and and, and that's what happens. Um, okay, so happy times there. All right, mm. uh, Amy, what is your question for the audience? What was your go-to pandemic read? Oh, that's a good one. Like what? Like was it? Something that you read before, like a comfort read, or did you try something new? What book got you through the pandemic? Oh, or how many books got you through the pandemic? Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> okay, day 183. Next. Okay. <laughs> and then, Katie, what would your question be? Mine would be, what are you looking forward to reading? What makes you excited? What, what, what makes you just like want to just grab something and and devour it is it you know like because it's familiar because it's different you know because you you might experience something you never have before and you may like it you may not but you know coming out of this pandemic what what are you looking forward to yeah yeah i will uh point out again uh amy's got a cozy mystery series starting uh coming out here december january called farmed and dangerous definitely a good read um katie has got a uh, noir literary fiction about cats there you go coming out on february 22nd 2022 definitely a good read do not read it before night do not read it before you go to bed and we got some we got some deep waters coming out of fox point that's for sure we, yeah we got... yeah we do i'm very excited i've been telling this to everyone i've been meeting to that we've got some really awesome adult titles coming out because and I will point out too that we do have a lot of children's books but mainly because those are only a hundred words whereas the adult novels are like a hundred thousand words and it takes a little longer to edit those but but they're definitely coming. Helen do you think you'll ever um, do anything adult or all you're going to school us on flamingo tongues and, and <laughs> zed thick anti-casters and everything else? I, you know, I think, uh, I don't know if I could write for people. I don't think I have a grown-up mind. <laughs> I knew you were the sleepover with grandma. <laughs> no, that's probably who I'll, who I'll definitely become. That's for sure. And I will say, um, even if you don't, I one thing I've noticed in the last year and a half of, of having Fox Point is there's actually a lot of adults who enjoy children's books that don't even have children or their children are all grown up or whatever and helen has got some awesome books they they are really fun to look at um i have a <laughs> proof and all the librarians that's one thing i've noticed all the librarians i've been visiting i i scheduled them and i have to back it off but i scheduled every like two two and a half hours to get from one appointment to the next but these librarians are sitting down with the children's books and they're reading them from front to back and all of my appointments are 
I'm late to a lot of my next appointments. <laughs> they're not and quick. I'm not, not going <laughs> to take it away, take that away from them because they're enjoying it. I mean, I watch their faces and they're like, oh, you know, and they, I mean, they're they're enjoying these books. So that that's a wonderful thing to see. I'm that makes me happy that we are putting out quality books that they really enjoy. And six of them so far are from Helen. Um, <laughs> let's see, what do I have coming out? I have Scout coming out here, um, the end of July, August, somewhere in there. One of these days I'll get uh, <laughs> the birds we keep out. Uh, that is the rest of my general fiction and um, Ollie, uh, about my octopus. I used to have an octopus. We'll talk about that on another Ooh, yes. uh, thing. And uh, that'll be out uh, maybe for my next birthday, next uh, February, March, something like that. I have so many books. I just have to sit still. And then uh, Liz <laughs> is going to uh, move to her office here on August 1st, and we will send um, flowers and, and cookie bouquets and a chocolate mm -hmm. fountain. And <laughs> Liz was like, oh. I think she'd like the ring too. Uh, oh, okay. <laughs> are you, are you the Drano ring. <laughs> yeah, actually, we'd Whoa. love to have some of the books um, from Fox Point in our office. We are planning on doing something like that for a lot of our clients, if not business cards, but you guys have books. Okay. Why not have those? So yeah. I'll probably be ordering some. Okay. Sounds Thanks. like a plan. We've got them. I, I'm looking at four or five really big boxes that came in today. What? Just a few. I yeah. see what you ordered. So just a few. Yeah, just a few. Um, yeah, I've got five boxes over there that say fragile and they're all about 30 pounds each and they're filled with books. And yeah, we're, um, it occurred to me that in July we have uh, nine events and I'm visiting about 25 to 30 libraries this month, July alone in 31 days and that's going into August which is the pretty much about the same and I'm like hmm I should order some books <laughs> mm, I need to get some books real fast taking over the world is time consuming it is it is <laughs> yeah and all I can say is Brad Brad is on the the call here he's our wizard of oz he's also the one who um has the muscle for carrying these up the steps because i will assure you like i tell other people this is not muscle that not really at all <laughs> anyhow oh there's some right, up well, here just <laughs> You know, there, there's a lot of skin there. If muscles do want to move in, you know, there's, well, you know, whatever. Okay. All right. Well, we don't have, oh, wait, we have, we have a question. We have to answer the question. I buy books based on the cover and the blurb on the back. Oh, this is from Susan. The blurb is really, really important. And there's an alternative to Amazon is called bookshop.org. Okay. Mm -hmm. Well, there this you go. True. Um, yeah, bookshop.org, and there are a few, but um, unfortunately, they don't deal with all indie publishers. I mean, I like bookshop.org, and it's, it actually supports bookshops, but it doesn't. Um, that's a discussion for another day. We'll just call it that. <laughs> but if you have, um, if you really, 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 um, you know, don't have an indie bookstore or whatever nearby, go to bookshop.org. That is true. Mm -hmm. And uh, they help support indie bookstores and that kind of thing. So much better deal. Mm -hmm. Anyway, all right. Well, um, okay. So thank you to Liz Kachuk. She is our uh, bean counter HR department. She can't mm -hmm. go anywhere. There you go. And she's <laughs> getting an office oh, on God. August 1st. And so full circle, acctg.com if you right, want to make right. Liz busier. <laughs> okay, and then we have Helen Holder and she's got one book for sure coming out by the end of 2021 and at least one somewhere in the middle and then for sure 2022. Mm -hmm. And she's got other things and she says she's retired, but you know, whatever. <laughs> um, she, she's got her whole groupie Helen Holder collection going on there. <laughs> and then Amy has got her first cozy mystery coming out. And actually though, this is her fourth book. Amy, do you have a website that other people can find your other books at? Um, yes, it is um, lulu.com is where I have my self-published stuff. Through. Okay, so lulu.com. Yep. Or you can hit me up on Facebook and order direct from me. And is, uh, is Amy Gregg author on Facebook? Amy, Amy Gregg author on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. 
and that's G-R-E-G-G. -G. Correct. Yeah, and so if you want the book signed, and obviously yeah. Amy will get the majority of the sale, then talk yep. to her through Facebook or any social media. And then yep. we have Katie Bishop, mm -hmm. who will have mm -hmm. her first noir literary fiction out um, in February of 2022. Yep. And good stuff there. And um, okay, and you can find Fox Point at F O X P O I N T E publishing.com. And oh. you can find me on Facebook and yep. on Twitter and on Insta. On Twitter, my handle is KDC Bishop. And on Facebook, it's katie.bishop.author for my author page. If you find the feed with a ton of noir on it, you're in the right place. <laughs> exactly. And she, she puts up clips of noir and stuff. So, I mean, you should check it out. It's my um, moment of noir. That's what I'm doing. <laughs> it's a, I'm making it a little thing. <laughs> there you go. You're doing a wonderful job at it too. Thank you. And um, so, yeah, when you get onto foxpointpublishing.com, uh, not only can you see all of our books off that main page, click on any of the book covers, it'll take you to the book information page. You can find a uh, shop now if you want to do any retail uh, purchasing. I'll just pop that in the mail before I hit the road again on any given day. And um, But look under professionals and you'll see all of our authors. You can click on any of their pictures. That'll take you to their web page. And then further down are all of the support staff that has Liz and Chelsea and Sarah and all the rest of them in there. So yeah, that is about it. We are not uh, going to do one of these Fox Talks on uh, July 27th, only because I'm sure I will be somewhere. It's like Waldo, where's Kirsten? <laughs> <laughs> I have no idea. Um, yeah, I don't know where I'm going to be, but I know I'll be somewhere. And then um, we'll do this, I think, again, August 10th. I think that's the next time we're going to do mm -hmm. a Fox Talk. Just look at the page that we're currently on, the Fox Point group page, and that'll tell us, or events on our web page and other than that i think that's it i don't think we have any other questions i am checking no other questions okay there you go susan i will talk to you and figure out what book you want and i thank everyone for joining us tonight you have a fabulous day in your neighborhood yay bye bye